the Internet and Online Services. Introduction The Internet, a vast global network of computers with information and resources on virtually every subject. Whether you are a student doing research for a class project or a professional gathering information on a client or competitor, the Internet can help you with your task. Do I have to be a computer geek to use the Internet? No. While it is true that it used to be an unfriendly environment, so many people are now online that the Internet has become easier to use. With today's graphical web browsers and mouse click access, learning is a breeze. Don't be intimidated by jargon or technical terms. This presentation is designed to show you how to choose an Internet connection for yourself and introduce you to some useful resources once you are online. Okay, so what type of information is on the Internet? The Internet is made up of thousands of individual computer networks, which are each identified by a different name. For example, NASA's computer network on the Internet is NASA.gov. Let's take a closer look at that name. NASA is the name given to the network by its operators. The last three-letter extension, gov, tells us what category this site falls into. Internet networks inside the United States are assigned three-letter extensions based on the following categories. Education. Most major universities have at least some information posted on the Internet, which includes papers and studies, as well as research tools. Educational network sites are given an EDU extension. Government. These networks include all types of government information, including any government libraries or research centers. Government sites have a GOV at the end of their names. Commercial. Commerce on the Internet is one of the fastest growing segments. This can include everything from car dealerships to computer companies. Any commercial Internet network is assigned a COM suffix. Organizations. Non-profit and special interest organizations on the Internet, such as Greenpeace, are given the three-letter extension ORG. Military. Although some of these sites fall under the GOV suffix, certain military organizations are recognized with the MIL extension. Foreign sites. Computer networks outside the United States do not usually use the three-letter suffixes. Instead, they use their two-letter country code as their suffix. Section 2. Parts of the Internet. The services on the Internet are divided into different categories. Here are brief explanations and examples of the facets you are likely to use. Email. This is the most popular use of the Internet. Simply put, email allows you to send and receive messages to and from different people all over the world. You will also find that you can join mailing lists, which provide you with useful information on many subjects. FTP File Transfer Protocol FTP allows the user to access Internet computer networks, which serve as libraries of computer software. Using FTP, you can copy this software to your computer for your own use. World Wide Web The World Wide Web is a collection of Internet resources presented on full-color computer network sites called Pages. These pages contain text and pictures, even sound. The World Wide Web is the fastest growing part of the Internet. News Groups What are your interests? No matter what the answer is, you will probably find groups of people on the Internet who share them. You can post your ideas and comments to these people using news groups, which are a kind of global bulletin board. All this with no long-distance charges. Information can be gathered from all over the globe, connect with people in faraway countries. As long as the phone number you dialed in order to connect to the Internet is local, you pay no long-distance charges. 
some internet lingo you will use. Now that you understand some of the parts of the internet, here are a few useful terms that everyone needs to know before signing on. Username. This is your online identity. Depending on how you access the internet, this name will vary. Some services allow you to pick your own username, while others are not quite so democratic. This username is how you will be identified while online. Password. This is your online security blanket. After choosing or being assigned a username, you will be asked for a password. The password keeps unauthorized people from accessing your Internet account. Service Provider. This is a company or institution which gives you Internet access. By using the modem in your computer, you can call the service provider's computer network, log in with your username and password, and use the Internet. Think of a service provider as your home base on the Internet. Email address. In order for people to send you electronic messages, you will need an email address. No matter how you access the Internet, your email address will always look something like this. Your username at service provider. Site name or Internet address. This is the location of an Internet computer network. For example, the White House might have the following Internet address. Whitehouse.gov Internet connections for you. The user has a wide variety of choices when it comes to connecting to the Internet. In this section, we will discuss and compare these choices to help you decide which is right for you. Online services. Using an online service such as America Online is a very popular way to access the Internet. Online services are private computer networks which allow users to use their information for a fee. By using a simple graphical menu, the user can access information such as news, finance, weather, game software, and a variety of other features. In addition, online services offer the user a relatively simple way to access the Internet. How do I connect to an online service? The best part about online services is that the software needed to use them is easily available at no cost. Any computer magazine or store will probably have sample disks for free. The software itself should be painless to install, and you should be up and running in no time. You will not need any other software to access the Internet. Your online service provides you with everything you will need to get up and running. In other words, you will not have to purchase any additional software in order to browse the World Wide Web or get your email. These features will already be built into the menu interface of the online service. How much do online services cost? Depending on the service you choose, the cost can vary. Online services are offering different rate plans, and you will have to compare on your own. However, most of these services are providing a basic rate of $9.95 a month for a set number of hours. Although the number of hours varies, it is usually five. After five hours of online time, you will be charged a certain amount per hour. This charge ranges from $2.95 per hour on up. What are the advantages of an online service? Ease of use. Online services use graphical menus to access their different features, so the learning curve is usually very low. Most new users can confidently navigate an online service in a short period of time. Security. If someone sends you abusive mail or interferes with your enjoyment of an online service, you can usually call a virtual security guard who will remove the offending person. Parents will find that these services also take many security precautions with children so that they cannot get into unsavory areas of the Internet. No additional software. 
Since the disk you use to install the online service is all-inclusive, you will not have to spend extra time trying to get your email software or World Wide Web browser to work. Simply install the online service and you will have no more configuring to do in order to use the Internet. What are the disadvantages of an online service? Cost. Since most online services charge a base rate of $9.95 per month for five hours, plus $2.95 an hour afterwards, fees can quickly add up. If you intend to be online for over 20 hours a month, this should be a consideration. Censorship. Some online services limit the content that the user can access on the Internet. While it is appropriate to do this for children, adults should be given the choice to view and read what they wish. Internet Service Providers Internet Service Providers, or ISPs, are private companies who sell Internet access. Unlike online services, most ISPs do not offer a dual disk with a graphical menu. ISPs do not offer any other service other than Internet connection, so they do not support an internal service with other features. However, if you plan on being online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP is almost certainly more cost-effective. How do I connect to an ISP? Any local computer newspaper should have many ISPs for you to choose from. In order to sign up with one, you must call them on the telephone and set up your account. Since you will want to use graphical software to run your Internet account, ask your ISP how much a PPP or SLIP account costs each month. Software. In order to use your Internet account through an ISP, you will either have to purchase separate software or ask your ISP about getting copies from them you will need the following software. Dialer. A dialer allows your PC to talk to other computers. Your ISP will either provide you with a dialer or help you configure your existing dialer. If your computer is using MS Windows 95, you have a built-in dialer called Dial-Up Networking. See the Windows help file on how to configure this software. Email Program. This software allows you to connect to the ISP's mail server and manage your electronic messages. MS Windows 95 contains a program called MS Exchange. This program can be used as your email software. World Wide Web Browser. This software allows you to use the resources of the fantastic World Wide Web. The browser will bring the web to life with sound and pictures. The two most popular web browsers are Netscape and the Microsoft Internet Explorer. Netscape can be purchased in any computer store, or a trial copy can be downloaded from their home page. The Microsoft Internet Explorer comes as part of the Microsoft Plus Pack for Windows 95, or it can be downloaded from the Microsoft Software Library. News Group Browser. Most World Wide Web browsers contain a program to browse the global discussion groups called News Groups. If your browser does not, you will have to acquire another piece of software. How much does an account with an ISP cost? Prices can vary radically with ISPs. It is in your best interest to shop around and get the best possible price. Generally, you should look for an ISP who offers you 50 to 75 hours a month for $25. This is a good guideline to follow when looking for an ISP. Make certain that the ISP you go with has a local number for you to call, or you will wind up paying long-distance charges in addition to your monthly fee. What are the advantages of an ISP? Cost. Per hour, an ISP is going to be significantly less than an online service.
If you are going to be online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP can save you literally hundreds of dollars. The same internet. All other features aside, an ISP is giving you access to the same internet as an online service. The only features you give up are the features which the online service provides. Better software. Although the online service software is easier to use, you will find that the internet-only software is more powerful and probably more reliable. What are the disadvantages of an ISP? Spotty technical support. Since every ISP is an individual company, you will find that technical support might be a problem. Ask your ISP if they have a tech support staff and how you can get any problem solved. Anyone who has stayed up until 2.30 a.m. trying to get their computer to work will realize how important this is. Here today. Since the Internet is such a hot concept these days, you may find dozens of ISPs popping up in your area. Ask your ISP how long he has been in business and about how many customers he has. Higher learning curve. Between configuring software and getting used to the Internet, you will find that an online service probably has a shorter learning time than an account with an ISP. Resources on the Internet. Since you now understand the two different types of typical Internet connections, here are some useful resources to start you on your global journey. Search engines. Using the Internet can be like trying to find information in a huge book which has no table of contents or index. Unless you know where to start, finding specific resources on the Internet can be very frustrating. In order to make finding specific information easier, the World Wide Web has several sites called search engines. Correct use of these engines will cut down on your search time dramatically. Web Crawler The web crawler allows you to type in specific interests and retrieves the names of the appropriate computer networks. For example, by typing in U.S. politics in this area and clicking on search, we will see a list of web pages which pertain to that subject. We can then access those pages by pointing our mouse to one that interests us and clicking. The web crawler allows us to be as general or specific about our search as we wish. In addition, WebCrawler has several ready-to-browse categories full of interesting sites to browse. To access WebCrawler, type this address into your World Wide Web browser. http colon backslash backslash www.webcrawler.com Yahoo! Like WebCrawler, Yahoo! gives you a starting point to search the Internet. Yahoo! has more ready-made categories than the web crawler, which can be chosen from this main menu. In addition, you can type in specific search information in this window, click on search, and quickly have useful sites at your disposal. Useful software. In addition to useful information, the Internet can also be a source of many useful software applications for your home PC. Don't worry, this is all perfectly legal. The software you can download from the Internet is known as Shareware. Shareware allows the user to try an application for a certain amount of time before buying it. Please read the license agreement of any software you download for more information. Microsoft. Do you have a DOS? Windows or Windows 95 based computer? Do you have a Macintosh which uses Microsoft applications like Word or Excel? Microsoft's software library has literally thousands of templates, patches, and add-ons for your favorite Microsoft programs. To access this site from your World Wide Web browser, type in this name ftp colon backslash backslash ftp.microsoft.com once logged in,
please read the file called index.txt for further instructions. To change the directories, just point the mouse to the folders and click. Oak Archives The Oak Archives are widely known as the most popular software site on the Internet. By browsing the resources of the Oak Archives, the user can find anything from useful business tools to great games. You can access the Oak Archives with this World Wide Web address. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.acs.oakland.edu The White House Anything you wish to know about the First Family or the White House itself is available here. Some of the highlights include a virtual tour, which includes pictures, an audio address from the President, and the ability to send an email message to either he or the Vice President. The address to access the White House web page is http colon backslash backslash www dot white house dot gov backslash wh backslash welcome dot html make certain to sign the guest book before you leave nasa are you gathering information on our space program or do you just want some close-up pictures of jupiter it doesn't matter because this site contains it all anything you wish to know about our country's space program is available here by using the clickable map of the United States, the user can access any branch of NASA. To access NASA, use this address in your web browser. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.nasa.gov Library of Congress This is the launching point to all of the vast resources of the Library of Congress. Search here for information on government, Congress and law. Access the Library of Congress with this address. HTTP colon backslash backslash lcweb dot loc dot gov backslash homepage backslash lchp dot html. Prepare to spend time here. The breadth of available information is staggering. The Louvre Museum. Browse and learn about the fantastic treasures at the Louvre in Paris. All exhibits are separated into categories for easy access and no trip is necessary. Use this address to access the Louvre online. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.paris.org backslash m-u-s-e-e-s -E -E backslash Louvre. Since you can copy the images to your computer, you will not even need a camera. The Virtual Tourist Are you taking a business trip or a dream vacation soon? Do you just wish you could travel? The Virtual Tourist and CityNet will provide you with online maps and information on almost any country in the world. The only thing missing from your tour will be the frequent flyer miles. Access the Virtual Tourist with this web address http colon backslash backslash www.vtourist.com backslash news cnn interactive keep on top of the latest headlines with cnn's world wide web site detailed information on weather and sports financial news and the latest in world events is at your fingertips with this powerful tool there is no need to break away from your busy workday to watch TV use CNN interactive at HTTP colon backslash backslash www .cnn .com. the Wall Street Journal in addition to the latest in financial information, browse the various educational tools. Virtually all articles from the printed version are available here every day. You may even choose to subscribe. The web address is http colon backslash backslash 
www.wsj.com. Of course, there is more to the Internet than just government and business. Visit this site for a little bit of fun. Just type in this address using your web browser. Virtual Movie Studio. Take a tour of MCA Universal and check out interactive previews of the latest movie releases. If you love the movies, this site is for you. Use the web address http colon backslash backslash www.mca.com to access Universal Studios on the Internet. Remember, no single internet provider owns these stops on the internet. In other words, it doesn't matter what method you use to connect. You can access the sites we just visited from an online service or an ISP. Also, we have just completed a very quick global journey, but we did not pay one cent for long distance, as long as the number we called to access the internet was local. Get going! After our virtual tour, you are probably ready to pick out a method of internet connection and strike out on your own. Of course, the previous offerings do not even scratch the surface of the information available to you on the internet. As you explore, you will find information and resources that you had never even thought of before your internet odyssey. Now that you understand your basic internet connection choices and discovered some interesting places to visit around the globe, enjoy your online journey.